Okay, day seven. This is gonna be the one week mark. So uh, here we go, 100 press ups coming up. Daily press ups. I've been thinking, uh, well, this this morning about <clears throat> about travel. It is probably, I guess, ho ho holiday like so. Leisure travel is one of the things that gives me a lot of joy. And even just in, I'm thirty five now, and even in my sort of travel life, and so I travelled, you know. It was, very fortunate and all of this is I appreciate a very much a, a very privileged position to be able to travel and do things like this but I uh, went on holidays abroad from when I was a kid and talking specifically about air travel how much that process has changed even just in the last 30 years that I can recall is it seems like it's become a lot less, there's a lot less friction in the process and it's, it's so much more, um, it can just be made so much more, it is so much more efficient and you know, there are problems with delays, cancellations and things like that. But if you think back, well, if I think back to how it used to be when I was a child, I remember that, you know, flight timetables were a lot more sparse. Whenever we had to travel, and it was usually traveling to India to see, see our grandparents, um, we always had to fly, often multiple stops. So we have to go from Manchester to London, to then somewhere in Europe, and then reach Delhi. The flights themselves, you know, the, the, it didn't feel as smooth. The whole process seemed a lot more janky. And when you were on the plane, it was a lot of, of just, just sitting there and reading a book. And now, if you think about it, the process has become so streamlined that you can go, you know, if, if I wanted to, I could get up now, pack a, grab my passport, go to the airport, get to Heathrow, you know, in half an hour, get on any, get on, you know, one of hundreds of flights leaving for Europe this morning, go have lunch out there and then be back in the evening. And that level of Sort of choice is just incredible to think about how much more accessible the world has become and i think that's definitely one of the big losing points of brexit and going to be one of the big downsides i went on for, for a conference last summer i went through europe and i had to go from amsterdam to france and then somewhere else across i, I can't remember somewhere else in, in north of france and the trains around europe were also incredible and the fact that you only had to get there sort of five minutes before the train departed for an international journey was, was awesome and I think that's how the Eurostar used to be before Brexit. That's 20 done, we're up to 50. And I was thinking about that, about how much more accessible it's become. And I could sit just here on my phone in the morning and, and plan a whole trip, book it all, 
you know, trains, flights, everything to go around the world as if I was just traveling up to, you know, North England, going, going, going anywhere within the UK. And I think that level of accessibility is amazing. I, it's something which I probably take for granted and something that I already do. I feel like I do a fair amount of traveling, which is great. And that's completely intentional. I understand how grateful I should be for the, you know, health and opportunities to do that. Uh, but it's something I want to maintain doing because I think some of my best experiences have been outside of the UK and more than that, just the outside of my normal life. And again, very lucky to have been to countries like Japan, um, Asia. Uh, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing those ones up is because I think the life and I guess the culture, if you want to use that word, is just so different. And it's amazing to see that and, and to be in that. And it's something which I find gives me a lot of joy because it's something which I remember a lot of. And I can't remember which book I read it in, but there was something to call the, the nostalgia dividend, which I really like the idea of. And that is, if you do an amazing thing, and that can be travel, that can be some sort of sport, that can be having a kid, <clears throat> anything which gives you a great experience, the argument that they were making in that book, and I'll, I'll try and find it and write it in the comments if I do, is uh, the memories that you have from that experience are like little dividends that you're paid out for the rest of your life. And so the sooner you can make that initial investment, you get so much more pleasure out of it because you get to think back to how incredible that was. And I that really rings true for me because I spend you know, a lot of my daydreaming time thinking about all the great you know, places and things that I've done like that. And so it's definitely something I don't regret at all. And I think travel is, you know, very broadly speaking, one of the things that I have enjoyed the most and have, have, have least regrets about, even if at the time it seemed like an expensive thing, a real headache in terms of work, cancellations, things you have to catch up on. Looking back on it, it rarely, if ever do I think I've ever regretted it. Any more done up to 70 maybe we're gonna have to do two more sets of 15 anyway i don't think anything i've said is that controversial i suspect people will broadly agree yeah great travel's great um seeing other cultures is a bit of fun i think the memories point is a good one and something that i try and remember when it feels like you're spending a lot of money to go and travel and things like that i guess I never really sat down and thought uh, about what my long-term travel objectives are, right? Like when you have a bit of time off, you tend to then look up where you can get a good deal to travel to. Um, but I've never sat down now with no specific time window in mind and thought, what are my travel goals over the next five, 10 years now? One thing to throw into the mix is I had a, well, my wife had a baby um, almost two years ago now. And we've tried to maintain some degree of, of traveling and <clears throat> often with, with family and things like that. But the nature and things you do on that holiday are really different. Um, so like nighttime going out basically is cut to zero. 
early mornings uh, are, are there. Your activities are limited to really one a day. Usually it's somewhere that's pram friendly, always has to be somewhere baby friendly. And that degree of sort of curious exploration is gone. So when my wife and I, we went on our honeymoon to Japan and that was the most intense, in a good way, holiday I've ever had in the sense we were doing things all day from the moment we woke up till we went back to sleep, traveled all around the country, amazing, amazing holiday. But I've had equally great holidays with, with my daughter because I get to see, you know, even relatively sort of simple holidays where it's just hot place, uh, hotel, pool, right? But through a kid's eyes, amazing, right? It's, it's, it's a whole new world. And seeing that joy in, it, in the child's face, in your own child's face, till now I found it amazing. And it, it has definitely made a lot of memories for me and that I'll be able to take my nostalgia dividend from in another way. But that sort of means that my next 10 years, my travel goals are very different to what they would have been if I didn't have, have my daughter. So I've got to sort of bear that in mind when I'm thinking, what do I want to get out of travel over the next 10 years? Okay, so that's 16 press ups, so that's 86, 14 to go. So, I, when I was looking this morning, that, sorry, let me take a step back. Before my daughter was born, our travel bucket list, that's probably the right word to use, is, was sort of more adventurous places. So, South America, you know, was. To, very high up on that list. Um, going to Australia, New Zealand, my wife really wanted to go to um, Madagascar. And so these were sort of, you know, once in a lifetime trips that we were trying to sort of plan a few years ahead. And I think those holidays at the moment are um, on pause, but alternatively, I, I've spent some time looking at how beautiful places closer to home are so really got a, a new appreciation for the staycation and just going within the UK to beautiful places and even sort of thinking a bit more widely even in Europe so some of the pictures I've seen of places in Italy, Italian coast and in Switzerland you know, are, are pretty incomparable to anywhere else in the world and those places are a sort of three hour flight away UK is a two three hour drive away some of the nice places so I think it's about reinventing what that holiday means and, and, and distance doesn't necessarily always equal better and I guess the final thing I'm going to say is one thing that's been always really important to me is I've, I think I prefer the heat to the cold and so I think I need to bear that in mind about when we travel and, and where we go, because actually, if you time it right, anywhere is a, a, a good temperature. And so I think trying to work that in with, it, with a child is even more important to try and keep my daughter comfortable and going to nice places. Anyway, maybe that's too soft of you, but that's what I thought of today. Great, another hundred done. See you later.